Hi, I'm Lauren Lehman, or sometimes I'll say Lauren Nikolaevich Lehman. Uh, I am right now in Anchorage, where I live, Anchorage, Alaska. I'm just uh, happy to share a little bit of, about my heritage. In 1798, uh, Yefim Rastruguyev, who was a Russian shipbuilder, married a, an uh, Alutic woman, Alaska Native woman, from Afognak, which is near Kodiak. And they had four children. One of the daughters stayed in Alaska and married Grigory Vosnikov. They moved from Kodiak in 1847 to be part of the uh, establishment family for the village of Ninilchik, uh, a small community in Alaska that still exists. And it, it was set up initially as a retirement community for those who had served in the Russian America colony and served their time, probably about 20 years. And they were looking for a place where they could raise their families and have cattle and uh, catch fish. And if what is interesting, my father was born in 1917. His first language, his dominant language, and the language that still you could tell was his dominant language even late in life after he had spoken English for all those years, his first language and dominant language was Russian. My so father would say, you're the boss, I'm so much of host. <laughs> <laughs> and then he would explain it to those who didn't understand both languages. <laughs> yeah. You're the boss, I'm the dog's tail. Yeah. And what are the others? You know, there's a... Uh a door-to-door -door salesman who is going around the village uh, here in Nilchik, and uh, he goes up to one of the houses and knocks on the door and the housewife comes out with a broom and says stew pie, stew pie and he says, oh stew pie apple pie, any kind of pie she goes, stew pie, stew pie my father uh, told me when it, late in his years, he was almost 93 when he died, but probably in his high 80s, he was talking about uh, one of his cousins from Ninilchik, one of his best friends when he was growing up and as a young man, who went on to become very successful in business and sold his business later in life and and was obviously what we would call him a multi-millionaire. It was, it was well off. And my father was a, a hard-working fisherman all his life, and, and while uh, you know, he, he was able to support his family, do well, if he didn't have the same type of financial uh, wealth to him. But he told me this. He said, Bob, Bob may be rich, but he says, I'm rich too. I'm rich in family. And, uh, and that really had an impact on me. And, and uh, you know, he left this life with some left behind some resources, but uh, the reality was what he left behind is, is what you saw today. Uh, we see generationally uh, young children and uh, you know, that are making a difference in our world. And, uh, and my, my father and mother really were rich, but rich in family. Is this my father? Yeah. The grandchildren garden. This is my rock. And my brother Isaac's rock. And my cousin Naomi's rock. And my brother Judah's rock. Grandma and Grandpa wrote our names on these rocks. So as far as I know, my grandpa and Lauren built this cabin, the red one. And then my grandpa and grandma, this was their cabin, is their cabin. <laughs> knock, knock. Anybody home? Just there. So Vanya's dacha. That's my babushka and dedushka, dedushkas. Dacha. 
Yeah, uh, this beach cabin is kind of like our dacha. We, you know, we, it's our summer getaway uh, to get out of the city. Uh, we normally now live in Anchorage, and you know, uh, living here is it, it's rather exhilarating, and it's it's fun. We spend more time together as family here, and uh, we have five grandchildren staying with us um, uh, for several weeks, and we have three more coming in tomorrow. Is there actually coffee in there? I wish I could have shrimp sometime. <laughs> Can I just eat it? In the earliest years of the Russian America colony, uh, the, the charge was to go and produce uh, economic value primarily through uh, fur and so uh, the, the Russians uh, hired the uh, Aleuts and the Aleutic people and, and engaged these people in getting fur like from the sea otters uh, and perhaps seals, sea lions and, and others like that because they recognized that back in in Moscow where the the, the more elite people lived that uh, there was a market uh, for furs and that was uh, important. So Russians, when they come from Russia, they brought the beads with them and they would trade for beads. The very early Russian fur traders could bring these beads over, many beads, so many beads, and they could make a lot of money trading beads for fur. My grandma also said if the native hunter wanted to get a gun, he, he, if he wanted to trade for a gun, they would stand the gun up, the rifle it would be so tall. They'd have to match the height of the rifle with furs. And that was a trade. That's how they traded in those days. But today, uh, in Anchorage, we have a winter carnival called Anchorage Fur Rendezvous. And, uh, and, and we celebrate some of our traditions, and one of the traditions is, is, is fur, and the trapping of fur and the selling of it. And there's actually a marketplace right here during Fur Rendezvous, or we call it Fur Rondi, uh, where furs are sold. And uh, so it's, it's kind of part of our tradition that's still a, a fun part. And we have a, a winter carnival that is the largest winter carnival in North America. This is our brand of uh, winter fun, and we're out uh, kind of celebrating the, uh, the last of winter, even though we'll have winter here for probably another six weeks, but uh, we're celebrating the last part of winter and uh, the, the hint of spring with blue sky and good sun. And uh, this has been going on for, I think this is the 88th year of uh, Anchorage for Rondo. My connection with uh, Anchorage Fur Rendezvous, or at least it was this kind of a special connection last year, I was selected to serve in the position of what's called Lord Trapper. And so I was chosen, probably because I had served in elected office in Alaska. Uh, I served in our legislature, but also as Lieutenant Governor of Alaska. And I've been engaged in quite a number of of boards and commissions and other community service activities uh, right here in Anchorage. And he is dropping one. Our mushers can drop dogs from the team. They cannot add new dogs to the team. We'll see if it will splotch a paint team dog, except for two. I had exposure to Anchorage for Rendezvous since I was a child. The biggest event, and, and still the biggest event today, are the dog sled races and uh, we're able to enjoy them. And once, once in a while, we would come to Anchorage from Nanilchik, but more often I would listen 
to the uh, d dog sled races on the radio, and we'd hear about it. Today, uh, we came out with five of our eight grandchildren. Wow. <laughs> this is what's called a sprint. That means they're running fast the whole way. So what's really interesting is sometimes uh, the dogs are, uh, uh, they're not urban dogs, you know, they, they're training out in the country and they're not used to being around people. So they come to downtown Anchorage, there's all kinds of smells and things and the dog is going, <laughs> and, uh, and they come in here and, and they hear people cheering and it's, uh, it, it's uh, difficult for them. So. Uh, a, a good musher is going to want to somehow get his dogs around people to so they're not so skittish. <laughs> My grandfather fished right here in this area, and this area here near Nanilchik and a little bit farther up the beach has been fished by somebody in the Lehman family for 110 years. A similar way with, uh, at first with nets, uh, like we have right now here in the inlet, and then for quite a few years, my father fished a fish trap, and that would be with poles and chicken wire, uh, and that was a very good way to fish, uh, but then when Alaska became a state in 1959, that method of fishing was banned, and so we had to go back to uh, set gill netting, which is how we fish today. This is Judah, and I made him. I made him this net about two years ago. He has a little play net, and we use it today. And we caught, I think, four fish out of his little play net. Judah Nick Lehman, and his middle name is after my father, Nick Lehman. The official scientific name is sockeye, uh, but we call them red salmon. That's that's the more common name, and it's the one that we use. Uh, at least here in the Nilchik, and a lot of people on the beach use the term red salmon. This, this is, what we're doing today is just subsistence fishing. It's kind of play fishing. Uh, when we do it the, the way with commercial fishing, we have longer nets, we use bigger boats, and, you know, and it's, it's just done a lot differently, but it's the same idea. Uh, we're still using uh, gill nets. I'd like to meet them someday. That would be fun.